We're joined now by the pastoral director of a ministry called Designed to be Pillars, mm -hmm. Ruth Kennard. Ruth says that her goal is to inspire, illuminate, and empower women to embrace the great love of God mm -hmm. and the freedom that they can know in Jesus. She's a mother, a grandmother, author, speaker, cancer survivor, mm -hmm. missionary, and mentor to thousands of women around the world. We're pleased that Ruth has agreed to be our Truth To Go teacher over the next couple of weeks here on 100 Huntley Street. And so we're looking forward to some daily nuggets based on God's Word and her own experience. Mm. But before we, uh, we turn her loose on Truth To Go, we want to get to know her a little bit. So Ruth, welcome to Thank 100 Huntley so Street. Much. Good to have Thank you back. You. It's a joy to be here. <laughs> well, um, we want to talk about some exciting things happening, a new book coming out and so on. But we want to back up a little bit and, and find out uh, about Ruth. <laughs> uh -huh. Going going back, and even as a, a young girl, uh -huh. you felt the, the call of God. I did. Um, I grew up in a home that read the Word of God and took me to church, you know. And uh, hearing missionaries speak, which we did at that time, uh, my heart was really drawn to just giving my life to Christ. Uh, and I was about five when I knew that Christ was calling me to become a missionary. I, I begged him one thing. I wanted to be a missionary, but I never wanted to look like one. So, <laughs> Even at five, you, I, were you, you had a stereotype <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there were different kinds of women standing up there on the platform. Right. And, yes. But uh, yes, yeah, so it was a long, uh, it's been a life of long obedience in the same direction, mm. you know. A good life. So you met a young man, I fell did. in love, got mm -hmm. married, and he was like-minded as well. He had a heart for missions. Absolutely. Bill is my husband, and uh, he certainly has a heart for missions. Um, he is vice president for international ministries with the Billy Graham uh, Evangelistic Association and heads up the project My Hope all over the world. Mm. So, um, But when I met him, he's very adventuresome. And so on Truth To Go, you'll hear a couple times when I just, you know, followed him. <laughs> we'd always get into some kind of problem, but he is very quick on his feet and would get us out. Thank you, Lord. Well, you no. were telling me earlier about the plane ride. When you first, you had been married, what, five months or something? Just five months, And yes. And you were just leaving to go to the mission field in... Bullet, Peru. Peru. Peru, yes. You're on the airplane, you, your brand new husband, and three yeah. other young guys. Yeah, exactly. What were you thinking? Yeah. I was, I was just basked in tears. My husband was so happy, and as we got, <laughs> it took 13 hours then in a prop plane, and as we got closer to South America, you know, he's saying, look, there are the Andes, look, Ruth, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> what have and I, I just myself into? exactly. I left yeah. all my wedding gifts, all my support system, mm. and went with this young man that I thought I loved and hardly knew. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's the way it started. Mm -hmm. That's not advice to other young yeah. people. That they should, yeah. mm, excuse me, right. start out that way. You know. You brought a picture with you, mm. and I'm going to try to hold this up the right way. This is a picture of the early days. This is you and Bill and a young girl. Mm -hmm. This is in Peru. You had been married about five months. You had yes. just gotten there. Yeah. And actually, life was a little more difficult than mm. even you imagined at first. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, we were in Peru for three months, and then we took a 50-hour long bus ride mm. up over... 50, five, fi zero. Five, zero. Wow up over the mountains and into Bolivia. So that's in Bolivia. Okay, yeah. this is in Bolivia. And this other picture, tell us about your life in now. Okay, this picture was is more recent. You went back and found yes. this place. Yes. But if you can see the, the window right above the white hood of the car, right? Yeah. Sorry, right there. That yeah. is where you stay. Tell us about your time there. Yes, we were in language school. We were there about eight months. Um, very difficult. Uh, one church had promised to send us money and it did not arrive. And so uh, we went through 24 hours, then 48 hours, and finally it built to 78 hours with no, with no, food, no food and no water. In this little bitty Yes, now we were going, we did have a little sandwich every day because we'd walk to the language school about a mile away and walk back. But we were young, we wanted to trust God, so we were not about to tell anyone that we were starving. 
But at 78 hours, um, we were in Cochabamba, Bolivia, the diamond capital of the world. Well, Bill went out and tried to sell our sleeping bags. Who wanted our dirty sleeping bags? No one. You were desperate. We were desperate. And then we decided that we would sell my diamond. As a newlywed bride. Mm. Yes. You're that hungry that yes, you Yes, we okay, were that hungry. Go ahead and sell um, my ring. He took the ring, and being the diamond capital of the world, and it was a small diamond, he brought back $25. Mm. But praise the Lord, it was money. And do you know, the next day, the check arrived. Mm. So we just mm. felt that right from the beginning, God was saying, look, this is about me. Mm -hmm. It's about the people who are in need. You need to know what need is. And I love you, and I tell you, that was the first time I ever gave thanks for a glass of water. Mm. And I would see people begging and think, I love you. I know where you are. I would be there, but for the grace of God. So that was one of our beginnings. <laughs> so that early lesson, Ruth, uh, just in a young bride so many years ago, how has that influenced mm. the way you minister now? Because you're still around the world. I mean, you minister in other countries. You're yes. fluent in Spanish. Um, yes. How has that affected your heart now when you mm. go out and minister? Well, hopefully I speak from a heart of great compassion and great love. Mm. I mean, I try to dress like the people where I go. If I'm in, um, you know, up in the mountains of Peru, I'm not dressed like this. Mm. Very little jewelry, simple. Uh, in India, I wear the Indian dress. Uh, but I want them to know that I'm a woman like they are, mm -hmm. that I identify with their soul needs, and that Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm.